hey everyone um so this is my first time going live on youtube so i'm not 100 percent sure how it works with the comments and things like that but i will try to um answer anything that comes through um so for those of you who know what this evening's about it's just me uh showing you how i painted some roses for a cake that I did, a wedding cake that I did um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so while I'm just waiting for some more people to join on, I will just take you through some of the stuff that I um, have used to uh, paint the roses. I'm going to stick with the same kind of colour that I had previously, which is sort of like the burgundy slash uh, pinky colours just because I think it gives quite a nice um, difference in colour between the dark colours and the lighter colours. So I've got a range of dusts that I use. So I usually uh, prefer to use either sugar flare or rainbow dust. You can use literally any type of um, edible dust that you want. These two work really, get, uh, really well together, just mixing them and... Um, Obviously, this is for the darker parts and this is for the lighter. And then for the foliage, I've got uh, gooseberry and forest green. Um, the gooseberry actually looks a lot lighter when you uh, paint it on than what's in the bottle. And then for the highlighter bits where I just need it to be a little bit more uh, lighter, I've got the Super White by Sugar Flare. And then the... Um, cocoa butter that I've used is Saracino's cocoa butter and I will just mention that I do have um, children that may come in and talk to me at some point. I'm also waiting on a delivery for some goggles that I may just have to pop off and get that but other than that I should be able to just get through um, the video. I will put the links to everything that I have used um, in the description box. You will need some um, paint brushes. So I've just got some here that I've used last time. Um, so just two quite thin ones. Both you can see um, are just slightly different. One's a little bit longer um, and one's a little bit shorter. And then I've just got a cheap brush that I will use for blending. Some um, tissue paper or toilet paper just to clean off the brush if needed um, I've also got some um, hot water here and just a plate this is what we're going to melt the butter on and mix our colours on um, hopefully that will last uh, for the duration of the live um, so before I get started with the picture I'll just break off some uh, cocoa butter now you don't need um, a lot oops you don't need a lot at all this is what it will look like um, and you just break off a little bit of a chunk you can always add um, to it if you run out but I never sort of managed quite fine with I can't really see because it's melting now with that sort of amount just place it in the middle and then you can always pull it, um, pull it to one side. So I'll put that there to melt. Have got my laptop um, on just to sort of um, answer any questions if anything comes through. There might be a slight delay. Um, so I can't draw at all. Um, I can model and I can. Uh, do stuff with fondant but drawing is just not my forte so what I did uh, for the rose which I found really useful because you can actually um, paint it weeks months ahead um, and save you know just uh, package it away and save it so I've got a picture of a rose and an outline of a rose I'll put the link to that in the description box once I'm done as well um and i changed the opacity to 25 percent. it's just a very light outline and i printed it on some um edible paper 
Now this is the the thick sort of like vanilla paper type uh, one that you can get. And the good thing about this is that, um, like I say, you can blow it up to any size that you want to. But also what it enables you to do is if the um, cocoa butter is not setting, you can pop it in the fridge for a couple of minutes and that'll just help it set so you can go on and paint something else. Um, so what I'll do today is I will show you how I painted the big rose because obviously that's got the most detail um, in the middle and then obviously some of the foliage as well. I will have to keep going back onto Facebook, I actually didn't think about this, just getting a picture up of um, the one that I did just so that I can, I've got a rough idea of, of, of where I'm actually going with it. So one second while I get that up, that's it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the darker colors um, just in the center. So I'm gonna go with the burgundy first. And so I'm just gonna make sure that you can, yeah, you can see the plate. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some on the side. So I've not used a lot. And then I'm just going to use my brush just to pull in some of the melted cocoa butter. So you can see it's just melted there to a bit like a watercolour, I would say, consistency. And then we're going to start painting in some of the darker parts first. So I usually, instead of starting in the centre, I just sort of like to build up some of the colour from around the edges. I'm going to try really hard not to go over the lines um, because I want to be able to see um, where the sort of like difference in shade should be. So obviously this is an open rose. Um, so this part here would be quite shaded because it's at the bottom and gradually it would come to get lighter. And then with the larger brush, this one, it's quite flat from where I used it last time. Just going to bring up that colour. So you can see it's just taken away the sort of darkness. And I think I'm just going to add in, I've got some chilli red just into that to give it a little bit more depth. So I guess if you like uh, things like painting by numbers, this is sort of like a good, a good one for you to do. So I'm just gonna add some of that red into there and I'll show you the difference that it makes, just popping um, some of the red in. So you can see that this is the color that we've got so far. So um, here, where this bit sort of like folds over would be the lighter bit, but behind that, this is the next part that would be dark. So the good thing about this as well versus painting on like actually directly on a cake is you can turn it around as well, which I always find really beneficial. So you can see that there's just a slight difference between the two colors there. This one's more of a purpley color and this one's a bit more what I would really call like a, a to me, this is more burgundy than this one. And you can make it as dark um, or as light as you want to. I prefer to go quite dark at the bottom. And then in the corners and then just pulling it up slightly. Oops. And what all we're going to do is we're going to build up our colours. So build up all the darker areas first. And so this is the centre of our rose. And we're going to make one kind of big swirl here. And around this sort of side here is where it's all going to be dark. On the outer leaves here, it will be the one that's adjoining. that will be the darker part. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to do some darker parts 
usually what I would do is get all the darker parts done first and then I would start to add in the lighter ones but I thought what I'll do is I'll get some of the darker parts done and then I'll go in with some of the lighter parts and show it so that you're not waiting around for the kind of whole thing to to come together but it is quite therapeutic to to sit and do something like this so you can see I'm just sectioning off the parts that are going to be dark and I'm just leaving a slight gap you can see just ever so slightly a gap between those two there so I know that that's going to be a different a different part and then for the darker colour uh, sorry for the lighter colour I've not done much other than mix the um the red in with a bit of pink and then the pink in with a bit of white so you can see that the as it stands right now the cocoa butter is still wet I don't know whether you can see that much on camera it is still wet and so therefore it's still kind of like blendable even when it's dry you can still sort of blend it in because the heated um cocoa butter from the one that you've just put on will reheat that part up so just taking off some of that excess on the brush and then we're going to start blending it in with the pink so if you do have any questions or anything feel free to to ask so again the same method as before it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of color still left on the brush and then i'll add just a tiny little bit of white in um And this is just going to take this pink that we've got to kind of like a paler, duskier pink, if you can see the difference there. And then we will just paint, we'll start off with this bit here. So I'm just going to go across the top there. So you can see there's a, quite a difference in the two colours that we've got going on here. And this bit will get slightly darker. as we start to blend it in and add some more colour. So I will add some red to this as well, just to blend it in. And then we're gonna pull that colour down. If it's not pulling down enough, you can just add a little bit of cocoa butter to this brush. And just a tiny touch of red so you can see it's turned into more of like a rosy colored there and I'd say that this is ideal for um, it could be beginners really because obviously there's no the artistic bit of it's been taken away with the fact that we're um, painting on this type of I guess it's like a stencil the only difference is is that it's um it's a bit more free flowing than a stencil because it's not on the actual cake itself so you can see I'm just adding some more color mixing it and just until I get sort of like a nice color that I feel goes well together while sticking in with that same kind of shade that we've got at the bottom there. So you can see we've got quite a nice ombre effect going on. So 
And then you're going to do the same for the ones at the side. I'm just going to make that a little bit more red for this part here. And then bringing it in down. And we're just sort of mixing the two together. So the more colour you put on the brush, the thicker the base will be. Here. and then just carrying on with the outer parts here so I just really like this bigger brush you could use a flat brush if you want it's just that the flat brushes I've got were not expensive but they're nice brushes that I like to use for dusting um, whereas once you've put cocoa butter on these brushes, they require a full clean to um, to get the cocoa butter out and then they're never the same afterwards. So I just stuck with um, the brushes that I didn't mind them not going back to the same again. So just remember to always leave a little gap so you know where you're going because what we will do is once we've blended in um, a few, so I'll do this next one here so they're all together and then I will show you how to just highlight um, certain areas just so that you can sort of like really define between the different petals that you've got going on. So again, a bit of a dark, darker tone for under here. And again, leaving that little gap there so you just know that that's the difference between the two. So for those that are in the chat um, this evening or are watching, where are you all watching from? Uh, do you make cakes for a living? Are you a hobby baker? Yeah, and it's honestly that tub of cocoa butter saff will last me. I mean, it could last forever. There's so much in that tub. I um like the Saracino one. Um, I like all of their products, so I find it very good to use. Now with this part here, because we're doing um, light and dark, you shouldn't need to leave a gap um, because obviously you can see the difference between those two areas. You don't have to worry about cleaning the brush off because you can see it just helps there that there's a bit of dark on there just to sort of like blend it in. You can actually get some little palettes um, where they've got sort of like six sections off for different colours if you want wanted to use that. Um, I'm a bit of a not a messy worker but I just like to I don't like it all to be separated I like to be able to drag bits in from different places oh so Saf you're not actually too far away from me because I'm in Bradford um 
So Halifax isn't that far at all. Thank you. So just blending in and like, as you can see there, I've put like a bit of a, um, a bit too much butter on there. But once it's dried out, you'll be able to go back in and just blend. And I'm taking some from there and adding it other places as well. So if you get to that point where it's just spilled on a little bit too much, don't worry about it um, because it will dry. It will dry out. I have a bit of a... Um, I always do stuff like that and I just have to sort of leave it to come back together. So you can see now we've got this, this petal forming, we've got the dark petal underneath, we've got this one here. So all around here is where you're going to leave the, um, the sort of like little bit of a gap. Let me just refer to my picture. So for this one, and I actually copied this from a, an actual row so I could see where the different tones needed to be. So I've never been to Suffolk, Jackie. Um, what's it like there? Have you started to cool down? Yeah, I feel like it's turning to winter now. Today's been quite cold and, and wet. So again, leaving that tiny little guideline, just so you can see the difference between the two dark parts. I'm going to fill in that bit there. With this one, because this one's coming up through the side of the rose, we also want to make sure that we are dark around this part as well. Because obviously this part is where a natural shadow would form. So you can see pulling that darkness out and then a lighter tone just through here a little bit more of the white just to brighten it up a little bit so you can see that this one's kind of going almost a bit like a, a dusky pink type of colour. I'm just going to blend that down. So I was feeling like I might try to do a live on YouTube once a month. I do lives on uh, Facebook occasionally and things like that. Um, but I do like to do a live every now and again to kind of show people some other stuff. I think it's different watching it in real time than it is sometimes on the videos that I post because obviously they're sped up because, you know, people want to watch something be done quite quickly. Um, but it would be great to hear what you guys would find useful to learn. So just a little bit more, just to blend in that part there. So you can see it's starting to come together. Once it dries, you can kind of see where you might need to just go in and add a little bit more colour and just touch it up. like that and then it will dry to the point where you can um, touch it as well so what I did for the cake that I did this one on is I wanted to make it look like the top part uh, sort of this part was on one cake and this part was on the other cake um, and so what I did before I started painting was I with a scalpel cut around all of this part here 
taking all that off and then chopped it off so I had that part and I had that part to deal with. This was uh, put on a backing of fondant that I had added a little bit of Tylo powder into just so that it held up these individual leaves um, and this part was stuck straight onto the cake beneath. So just add a bit more darkness into this bit here. Okay, so now you can see this part standing out. Um, this is the part of the rose that's kind of like rolled over. Now this part I want to sort of be quite light. So I'm going to add a little bit more white into the pink that we've got here. And just a little more cocoa butter. So you can see it's kind of gone like a bit of a purpley colour. So this part would be the lighter part for this one. And then don't worry because what we will do is go in and add some highlight with some um, white. And just a darker line at the top there. And then just going to take off the excess there. And then just start to blend that in. So whilst I've got some of this that's now dried, I'm just going to go in with a different brush and just some white and just show you sort of like how to add in the highlight. Still, even though it's being washed, it's still got some green on from last time. So a little bit of still green. You might have to use a different brush for this one. Last time I literally had two brushes on the go, one for red and one for uh, greens. Okay, it's a bit more white. Okay. So this part here, where it separates, you're going to go over with some of your white. Now this is going to add the highlight. So the, the purpose of the highlight is for the lighter colour rather than the darker colour. And it just helps separate those two areas. So you can see, just as I've painted on, and you will need a thin brush for this bit, guys, because you don't want to have sort of like a thick white line. You want it to look kind of natural rather than uh, something that's quite thick and dark. And then the same for this bit round here. So again, it's on the lighter side. And on the rim of that part there. So you can see I'm not pushing down very hard. I am just doing a very light pressure. I don't want to add too much of the white. Because again, this is just a highlight to separate the two. And again on this part. So 
So you can just see what a difference that part makes just with that little white line that's there. Just along the bottom here. So even though these two are both dark, you kind of still want to add just a little bit of colour to this part here. And don't be afraid to sort of like round off the edges either to make it look a bit more natural. And then even this leaf, uh, this petal here that's attached to nothing there, you still want to be able to go around and add it doesn't matter if your white goes a little bit pink as long as it's a lot lighter than everything else and then with this part you want to separate these two so obviously this is the petal that's bent over here and if you can have a picture of um, this up before you get going, it would probably help with the fact that you've got something to reference as to where the lines should actually be. I can just tell because I've had that dark, dark line. Like so. So you can see what a difference those two, the lines have just made. And then I'm just going to go back in and start to fill in these bits. And I will try to do it as quick, as quick as I can for this one. Trying to make sure again it's quite dark in the corners and in the um, inner bits as well. And then just blending it out to the lighter colour. A little bit more red I think in this bit. The thinner you go with the paint, the lighter the colour will get as well. So for those of you that are making cakes this week, what do you have on? Um, I've only got two cakes this week, which is quite a quiet week for me. Quite nice because I've been a bit crazy with cake orders at the minute. Um, I have some tutorials to edit as well for uh, for my channel, so I'm going to crack on with that this this week, I think. So I'm just going to mix some more of the red in with a little bit of the white. So you want to be very careful that the dusky pink doesn't get to that point where it's just a bit too purple. So one part that I struggled with with this one was the actual centre of the rose because there's not much um, of a guideline really. Um, so let me just get my picture up. So... There's more lines on here than what I used to start off with. So I kind of took it from the centre here and I sort of went round. So all of this bit was dark. And you come around. This bit went down there. And then also we had something coming from the side. like so so you can see i'm just starting that swirl 
over there a little bit more dark here again not much need to keep a really thin line there at the minute because we you can see quite clearly the difference between the two colors we're going to bring that round like so and then we're just going to start filling in with the bit of a lighter burgundy colour. Just through the tops. And then this is a good place to start going in with the highlighter quite early. The paint needs to be kept really thin on this bit just because um, otherwise it takes quite a while to dry. I think this part down here is still a little bit wet where I just flooded it a bit too much with the, um, with the cocoa butter. So by blending it in and not, um, you can sort of still see that I've got that shape there, which is where I want the white to come around but I also want it quite dark under here because we're going to sort of go in there with a bit of highlighter to sort of separate the petals a little bit so whilst I leave that to dry I'll go around sort of like down here it's going to be quite dark. Around the top. So because we're going into the, the centre of the rose, I'm not going to go as light between the two colours. And then just a little bit of a lighter colour around the top. And we're just going to pull that straight down. So you can see when I'm pulling it down, there's not much there to pull so that you can see kind of like the amount of cocoa butter that I've got on my actual brush is quite minimal. I'm going to add a bit of red into that and just put a bit more red in there so this is chili red from rainbow dust it's just quite a vibrant red just gonna add that through the top there leaving the color we've already got on we're just gonna pull it down I'm going to start to fill in around these parts as well. And a bit of red through there. Oops. So, and if you wanted to um, take a break, you can always cover this with cling film. It will dry up, um, but you can just go back in and, and sort of reheat it up with some fresh hot water. So again, leaving a little bit of a gap now just so we know the difference between the, the petals. And then, oh, 
again, wrong brush used. So I'm just bringing that down. So you can see that the rose is really starting to take shape. I'll put that down so I don't get it mixed up again. So with our white brush, I've just dirted again. We're going to go back in just with the white while our um, while our paint's a little bit dry. Just adding a bit more white into there. And then this is where we're just going to sort of redefine our swirl. So for the centre. So we're going to bring, if you think this is the where we all start. So that's going to go around that way. And then we're going to bring this part around. So with this one, you can really see that it doesn't, we're not really following the guidelines as such, more just the colours that we've put in there. Can you see? So I'm just trying to bring those, those round. And if you make a mistake, like can you see where I've just gone a bit over, you can just go back in and with your brush and just blend it out. You can always add a little bit more colour if it's still a bit too not noticeable. Now we just go underneath it with some of the darker colour. And now you've kind of like redefined where those lines are to start off with. You can then go back in with the darker colour just to get this bit out of the way. Like so. And then sort of any bits that you're not fully happy with, you can go back in have a play. So we'll leave that bit to, to dry. I'm just gonna kind of erase this line a little bit. It's a bit too thick. I want it to be quite thin so it's barely noticeable. It's just giving us that highlight. You see it's made a little bit of a difference. We do the same with this bit here. So I would say it would probably take me maybe about an hour and a half to do this main rose. And so while that's drying, what I'll do is I'll just show you how to paint the foliage. Now this part I found probably the easiest um to do because it's very simple with with that part um it is just about uh, blending the two different colors so i went for the lighter leaves being the bigger ones at the back so I'll just turn that plate around a little bit more of my cocoa butter just because a lot of that is now red And 
and we're going to start off with the lighter the lighter green and then next to it we'll do the forest green and so I did these ones the darker leaves the uh, darker colour and also we'll start off with these lighter leaves at the back um, so it's always best to decide which sort of side you want to be the darkest side so I'm going to go for this bit here underneath the leaf it's going to be the darkest side for me and everything else is just going to be a lot lighter and that's just because mainly the shadow would fall on the bottom side So you can even add in a little bit of the darker green to go underneath here, look. So these are just a lot easier to do, just simply because of the shape. You don't have to take into consideration different petals or anything like that. And just pull that darker colour in. And then just going in with the darker green to create the lines in the leaf like so and these ones are quite wispy so when you um, are painting you can make sure that the center of the leaf again is quite wispy as well So you can add as well, just to brighten up this green, you can add a little bit of yellow um, to it if you want. So I'll show you what it looks like, just the difference between the leaf colour with a bit of yellowing. So this is it with the, with the yellow. So you can see that it's a little bit more of a lime green. And again, I would focus the darker side on the bottom of the leaf. And blend. Oh. And then the dark line through the middle. And then for the dark leaves, <clears throat> again, just mixing a few colours of the green together. And we're going to do the darker colours towards the bottom of this leaf. And we're just waving our brush in and out, in and out to follow that <clears throat> kind of like pattern. that's there so just in and out so we don't have to spend ages um, going over those bits and then just a lot more of the dark colour at the bottom for this one a little bit of the lighter a little bit 
of yellow in there as well. So once you start painting with these colours, I think you'll see where the colours need to be, which bit needs to be darker, you know, whether it's going to need some um, yellow or anything like that. We're just going to blend blend it out and then again with the darker colour we're going to go through the sort of middle of the leaf and then with this one it did have some sort of like lines so again with this we're going very light we don't want a, a harsh uh, thick line Getting smaller as we get closer to the edge, so you can see just like that. And then I'll just show you how to sort of like define between these sort of two areas. So again, you're going to colour the bottom part of the leaf in the darker green. shading underneath here and then the rest in a bit of a lighter green and so you can see how that shaded area there has sort of helped separate between the two leaves And then again with the darker colour going through and so you can see that that shadow just there is sort of defined between those two leaves and you can bring it down into that leaf underneath so you can see we've got the greens here with uh, just the two different greens and then here with a little bit of yellow in for the stalk that goes through the middle or the stem um, I just kept that with a very dark dark kind of green um, just to go through the middle and again, you're just following the line that's already there. You shouldn't need to separate these bits like you do with have to do with the rows. So you can see like that. To separate these two areas here, obviously you've got the flower, you've got the um, the leaf. You just go back in with the very pale pinky white colour and just highlight that part of the rose. It's a little bit more white. I'm separating these two leaves I think were di two different ones yeah so again with the pale white very light stroke you don't need much of the um, the cocoa butter on your brush at all again through this bit here
So you can see how it's starting to sort of really come together. And if you was putting this all on one cake as is, you could um, either cut it out just before you started painting it, or you can cut it out um, towards, sort of like once you've finished cutting it, you could, uh, painting it, sorry, once you've finished painting it, you could then go on and um, cut it out to stick on the cake. You put, I would recommend putting it in the fridge just to allow for it all to firm up and dry and you make, you knowing that it's all properly dry and that nothing's, nothing's wet. Just gonna round that off a little bit in there. So I am quite conscious that this has been uh, an hour, I think now. So I'll show you how to finish off the center of the rose. I think we've covered pretty much all the basics. Um, like I say, I will put uh, a link in the description box for the template that I use, but you can Google, if you just Google like a rose template or a rose outline or something like that. And just remember when you print it off, you want to kind of make sure that the um, opacity is sort of like 25%. You don't want a bold black line um for the rose you kind of want it quite muted so like you can see that this is like a faded um a faded gray hi uh is it nabila from algeria thanks for joining us this evening and so i'm just going in and picking up the other parts of the rows that are to do with the center. And then we'll go in and just do this big petal here. So again, darker for the, sort of like the corners, the crevices, the edges. And what we will do is we'll just leave a slight outline here as well. Um, to completely dry, it totally depends on the heat, um, how hot it is. So like right now, there's parts of this that are dry. You know, I can touch it and it's dry. Um, I would say by the time you have finished painting, um, the kind of only wet pieces would be the, the bits that you've just been working on. Everything else should be dry. Um, one thing you need to remember though is that it, you are dealing with cocoa butter and um, so even though if it has dried obviously with a lot of handling um, it will heat back up again and get and get soft um, that's why for mine I sort of went ahead and um, cut mine out first so I didn't have to worry about that aspect of it but then also I um, just popped it in the fridge for a couple of minutes um, before I stuck it on the front of the cake just to sort of help with you know that it's core temperature being a little bit cooler but I will um, you know if you end up having a go and you need some help with uh, whatever aspect of it, you can always pop me a message on Facebook or pop me a message on Instagram, whatever method, or uh, leave a comment on YouTube. I am quite active, so I check the comments every day and I um, do try to respond to people because uh, there's nothing worse than uh, trying to do something and not being able to uh, figure something out. So you can always feel free to ask me at a, a later stage if you wanted to.
And you can see that outer leaf there, I'm just blending it in. My cocoa butter is just drying out a little bit now. It's starting to cool down the water bowl. But obviously that's been an hour that, probably an hour and 10 minutes because I got it ready just before the, the live. And it's only now started to sort of cool, cool down. So has anybody done any uh, painting on cakes already or would this be your first time having a go? So I'm just lightening up this top part here to sort of blend, blend down. Red in there. Um, I am painting on um, sort of like edible paper. Uh, so this is uh, vanilla paper. I will put a, a a link. I'm hoping I've never recorded on YouTube before, but I'm hoping at the end of it I'll be able to put a bit more stuff in the description box um, and I'll link up oops I'll link up everything that I've used um, in the video but this is just edible with not wafer paper edible vanilla paper so it's slightly thicker than wafer paper um, and it tastes very nice as well So you can see here, just where my um, butter is starting to dry a little bit, it's just becoming a bit harder to blend. And so back in with the white. going over the little uh, lines that we left out earlier on, just sort of highlighting the difference between the petals. So you can see just how that little bit of highlight just sort of brings everything together, helps separate the two areas. And like I say, you can go back in and just thin that out. This is from this one petal. So we're going to curl it, this one, all the way. So that's coming up into this bit here at the top. Again, it's 
mixed in slightly with the the pink so it's not a harsh white line at all it's just a very very muted light pink so I think I've covered with you guys the basics so the um the center of the rose the petals the foliage um the highlighter so what i will do is i will leave it there for this evening um i will finish the rose and then post um, a picture of the finished product as well i will also i think go back and do um an actual tutorial for this so that just uh, for future, if you're ever doing it and you want something quick, um, you don't need so much detail, I'll pop that together as well. Um, and I will put that up uh, fairly soon on the on my channel. Uh, if you do have any questions or anything, like I say, feel free to contact me either by Facebook or Instagram. Um, and if you do have a go at this, feel free to share it with me. I'd love to be able to see what you guys have come up with um, and any different uh, colour combinations that you've done um, but yeah thanks for tuning in this evening guys it's been a pleasure um, I do want to do more lives on YouTube so if you want to let me know what you would like to see um, and I'm more than happy to put something together okay guys thanks for watching